Thanks very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I think we're up for four more years. What do you? Yeah. Good afternoon. Thanks very, very much for coming. In just a few days, Saskatchewan is going to make a very, very important choice. It is a choice about the future of the province. It's a clear choice, as clear as any that have been put before the people of this province. A choice between moving this province forward or risk going back. It <laughs> you know, I remember during the federal election, there was a lot of talk about the orange wave and how it was going to sweep over Regina. Remember that? I remember them talking that, that what, that's what was going to also happen in the provincial election. But they forgot something. In this town, green is the color. <laughs> so I want to start with a question today. Are things better today in your Saskatchewan, in your city, than they were four years ago. Yeah. I think you're right. Today in Saskatchewan, more people live here than ever before. Today in Saskatchewan, young people are choosing to stay here. Other young families are choosing to move here. Today in Saskatchewan, the employment numbers were published by Stats Canada, published for the whole country. And unemployment rate, unfortunately, is up all over North America. 49 of the 50 states and provinces across this country and in Saskatchewan, the unemployment rate today is down to 4.1%. <laughs> Get this, ladies and gentlemen. Since you helped us get elected four years ago, there are 26,400 more jobs than just four years ago. We it's our very own Occupy movement. It's Occupy a New Job right here in Regina and right across the province. And you know what the number one city was in terms of employment performance? The city of Regina. It's no longer just the capital city of our great province. It's the employment capital of Canada. It has the lowest unemployment rate of any city in the country. And today, Regina is the economic growth capital of the country because the Conference Board of Canada, I think, in a report released two days ago, said Regina would lead all cities in Canada in terms of economic growth. This is the new Saskatchewan. This is the new Regina. And ladies and gentlemen, we love that more people are working in Regina, but you know what would make it even a little bit better? If we had more Saskatchewan party MLAs working for Regina after the <laughs> Today in Saskatchewan, our economy is leading the nation, not third or fourth, not behind Ontario or Alberta, but number one. Today in Saskatchewan, the general revenue fund debt of your province has been reduced by your government by 44 percent, three billion dollars. Today in Saskatchewan, the budget is balanced. Today in Saskatchewan, our municipalities finally have a stable revenue sharing formula, something they've been asking for for well over a decade. We fulfilled our <laughs> We 
we fulfilled our promise, ladies and gentlemen, and for your city, for the city of Regina, it's meant a 113% increase in revenue sharing under our government than under the NDP years ago when they had every seat in the city. 33.5 million more dollars every single year, certainly this year, and actually growing next. Today in Saskatchewan, we're fixing the highways. We're investing in infrastructure. We've invested over $2.2 billion in four years. That's 64% more in our first four than in the NDP's last four years of government, and we know there's more work to be done. We've worked hard to make sure that the people of this province have benefited from the growth in Saskatchewan. Today in Saskatchewan, for those with disabilities, we have a new and dignified income support system, and we have a wait list of folks that have been waiting for a place to live and the dignity of, of day programming that's being eliminated ahead of schedule because of leadership from your government. For seniors, we're building more long-term care facilities. We've doubled the seniors' income plan and expanded those who are eligible by doubling that list as well. For students in this province, our post-secondary system is seeing record investments. Student loan limits have been increased and for the first time in a generation. There are student housing projects being built, a 3,000% increase in student housing in the province of Saskatchewan under this government. Today in Saskatchewan, producers, farmers and ranchers know that if there's trouble, they won't have to wonder if the government in Regina is with them. Today, today, producers know that we will be there when they need us, that we are determined to continue to improve the long-term stability programs, to improve crop insurance, and that it was this party that finally moved beyond the rhetoric and actually acted on education property tax, an average reduction in education tax, by the way, for producers of 80 percent, as well as relief for people living in our cities, in our towns, in our villages. For people in the health care system, wait times for surgery are coming down because of our surgical wait times initiative. People waiting longer than 18 months for surgery has dropped by 75 percent. People waiting longer than 12 months is down 56 percent, and more progress is being made every day. We've hired 900 more nurses working now in the province. There are 200 more doctors practicing today in Saskatchewan than there was four years ago, and we know there's more work to be done. And today in Saskatchewan, ladies and gentlemen, taxes are lower for everyone. For families, for education property taxpayers, for small businesses, taxes are down for everyone, 114,000 fewer low-income Saskatchewan people paying any tax at all in Saskatchewan. And may I just say this, ladies and gentlemen, because of the team that you helped elect four years ago, and hopefully a much bigger team we're going to elect in a couple of days, but because of that team, and because of some good fortune, which we need to always recognize, because of some good time, we've been able to say this over the last few weeks of the campaign trail. Today in Saskatchewan, there is a government that has kept its promises. <laughs> We made a lot of promises in the last campaign, over 140. We didn't make as many promises this time. <laughs> we kept those promises. I've had people say, I didn't necessarily even agree with everything you did, but at least you did what you said you would do. That's a rare commodity today in politics, <laughs> something to be proud of. That's why when we called the election now four weeks ago or so, I, I said we were going to run on our record. 
We have promises that we've kept and a solid record in government, but I said we would also lay out some new ideas to keep the province moving forward, that we'd build on the vision we have for Saskatchewan and make no mistake about it, our vi vision is unchanged. We believe this province should be a leader in this country. We believe this province should aspire to be a permanent have province in Confederation. We believe that... We believe there should be 1.1 million of us by 2015, that the debt should be eliminated, that we can continue not just to be an economic leader, but a leader in terms of how we treat those who are most vulnerable among us. Our vision is that this province will be the best place to live in, to invest in, to work in, to build a life in. And to build towards that vision in this campaign, we've made some targeted and sustainable and affordable promises to help students, to help parents saving for kids' education, to help families, to help first-time home buyers, to help seniors, to help further people with disabilities, to improve health care, especially in rural areas, to ensure that our communities are safe and to invest in infrastructure, in highways, in municipal infrastructure, and in parks and rinks. And we're going to do it within a balanced budget. <laughs> When we kicked off the campaign, uh, I said that if, if the NDP had planned to have a bidding war where they would use the taxpayers' money for that bidding war, we were simply not going to participate. That's the campaign they've chosen to run, ladies and gentlemen. The NDP have chosen to try to buy votes from the people of this province. They've built a massive platform, an 80s-style election promise platform on the promise of a massive potash tax increase that will risk billions of investment that is making this province unique right now, risking the jobs that are coming from that expansion. You know, the media, the media asked Mr. Lingenfelter a few days ago about the, the fact that if he's relying so heavily on potash revenue, what if, they said, what if, what if there's a collapse in potash sales or in the potash price? We know a little something about that. <laughs> 2009. Do you know what he said? He said, and I'm going to quote, I watch BNN very often, and no one is predicting a decline in potash prices. <laughs> I watch BNN. A couple of days ago, the next day, in fact, in the Star Phoenix, Scotia Capital analyst Ben Isaacson, in a story entitled Potash Rally to Slow, experts say, he points out that the potash bull run may be over the next day. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be responsible. We need to be cautious. I watch BNN too. <laughs> but I'm not going to base a platform on it, and we're not going to risk the province you've worked so hard to build on television news. On. In their platform, they've costed over about $3 billion with the promises, but in the last week, there's been a bunch more stuff they've added that's not in the platform. Hey, Prince Albert, there's a bridge that they promised that's not in the platform. That's $100 million. They haven't costed out First Nations revenue sharing still. They promised highway twinning on 6, 39, 10, and interchanges uh, near Emerald Park, not in the platform, not costed. Uh, wind power, they missed a $500 million price tag on their wind power deal, which we didn't expose, actually, that was the CBC. That's over $5 billion in promise. There's a lot of it coming from these new infrastructure deals they've been announcing in the last, in the last few days. They handed out a backgrounder a few days ago to try to explain where some of this was coming from. And get this, $260 million of the infrastructure money is coming from Stephen Harper. coming from the feds. It's in their backgrounder. You know, I had the chance to meet with the Prime Minister a couple times in the last number of months. He never mentioned that he was helping Dwayne develop his election platform. <laughs> issues we need to deal with in this province that will need uh, strategic investments 
It's true of our capital city as well, and we'll work respectively with our part respectfully with our partners to get to the right conclusion to make sure it's part of a responsible plan, but it will be responsible because, ladies and gentlemen, when politicians make these kinds of promises, they need to remember it's not their money, it's your money, and it's your problems. So let me just conclude uh, with a choice that I think is before the people of the province. Some people have said, by the way, in the last few days, as polls have come out, well, it doesn't really matter what the NDP promised because they're not going to win anyway. I've heard others say, well, really now the choice is just, is just between the size of opposition we might have. No, it's not. The choice on Monday is about the future of your province. The choice on Monday. And the choice on Monday is about who's going to represent you in the legislature. It's a choice between Hutch and Peterson and Ross and Ryan, Mikowski and Yates, Doherty and Yazanowski, Steinley and Morin, just to name a few of them. And, ladies and gentlemen, it's a clear choice. Forward or backward? Make no mistake, make no mistake about what is in the NDP platform, about where they would take this province. They would dismantle the surgical wait times initiative because it has a private component within the public system. Because it seems they're more interested in ideology than surgery. They would take us back to the days not too long ago when we had the longest surgical wait times in the country. But well, we are not going back. They would repeal the labor laws of this province that we passed to make sure the labor environment is fair. They would, ladies and gentlemen, take us back to the days when public sector union leaders could threaten to stop plowing highways in advance of a blizzard as a part of a strike. They would take us back to the days when we were the only province that didn't have essential services legislation protect, to protect the public safety and the health of you and your family. We are not going back. They <laughs> They would take us back to a time when Saskatchewan's investment climate was not that healthy, when governments pick winners and losers with your money, when resource investments seem to happen everywhere but here. We're not going back. Their platform would take us back to 80s-style deficits and increased debt. We're not going back. Their economic policies straight from the 1970s, including possibly nationalization would threaten jobs, and I believe risk our have status. I believe it might take us back to the days when this province was a have-not province. Let's send a message today from the Turby Center in this beautiful capital city, three days before an, an historic choice that this province is about to make. Let's send a message that we've worked too hard, that we've come too far, that we've achieved too much. We are looking straight ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Our eyes are clear and they're set on the horizon. Our resolve is strong today. We are determined to keep this province moving forward as a leader, a national leader, an international leader, a have province ready and able to meet the challenges that we face, to seize the opportunities are th that are there. Let our message today and our actions until Monday tell a province and a people and even a country that this Saskatchewan has set her course, she set, she's planted her standard, and she's moving forward, and we are not going back. <laughs>
I think that's a consensus. <laughs> so let's go from here today and present this very clear choice to our friends and our neighbors and our fellow citizens. Let's finish what we've started. The choice is action, not words. Balanced budgets, not deficits and debt. A party that wants to earn your vote, not try to buy your vote. Growth and not decline. Hope and not fear. Choose the train, not the train smoke. Choose the future, not the past. Today, Today, your Saskatchewan, the province that you're building, is better and stronger and prouder than it has ever been. There's more work to be done. But today in Saskatchewan, people are looking forward to the future with hope and optimism because the only day better than today in Saskatchewan yeah. is tomorrow in Saskatchewan. May God bless our province. Thanks for coming.